This video was brought to you by the ILC. Hello there once again. Welcome to episode 48. This episode is called Partial Fraction Decomposition. Now, using partial fraction decomposition, you can break apart fractions that you ordinarily would not be able to. Let's go ahead and have a look at it. All right, so our fraction this time is x plus 2 over x raised to the third minus 2x squared plus x. And our job is to break this fraction into pieces and rewrite it as a series of partial fractions. Now, as with most things that involve fraction, your first step is going to be to get the denominator into factored form. So let's think about how we could factor this. Starting from x to the third, minus 2x squared plus x. Let's think about what they have in common. Well, they all contain x, so at the very least, we should be able to factor an x out of there. If we do factor an x out of there, we'll have x to the third, take away one of the x's, should give us x squared. And then minus 2x squared, if we take away one of the x's, we'll have minus 2x. And then x, if we take away the x there, we have just a 1 left over. And then let's think about, could we factor this any further? You might recognize this pattern here. x squared minus 2x plus 1 can be factored into x minus 1 times x minus 1. Now we should write that really as x times x minus 1 to the second power because we've written it twice. So let's go ahead and rewrite the fraction as this. x plus 2 over x times x minus 1 squared. Now that we are in factored form, let's try to break this into pieces. If we look at the bottom, we might notice that there is an x and an x minus 1 squared. The first term is first degree, and the second term is squared, so it's second degree. So what we have is a degree of 3 in the denominator. Therefore, we should have three fractions in our partial fractions. We'll call the first fraction A, the second fraction B, and the third fraction C. Underneath A, we'll write the first term in the denominator. That's x. Underneath the second term, we'll write the next term in the denominator, x minus 1. Underneath the third term, we're going to write the third term. That third term is also x minus 1. If you look at the factored form up here, it is the third term. But because it appears twice, we'll say x minus 1 squared underneath c. And we'll just put plus signs in between them. Now that we have the pieces, what we're going to do is multiply everything by the denominator that we started with. That is, x times x minus 1 squared. So I'm going to take the entire equation that we have up here and multiply it by x times x minus 1 squared. Now let's think about what cancels out. In the first fraction, we've already got x and x minus 1 squared on the bottom. If we multiply by that, the entire denominator cancels. If we do the same thing to the next fraction, fraction a, you see that we have x on the bottom. If we multiply that times x times x minus 1 squared, the x's will cancel, but you'll leave behind the x minus 1 squared. So we'll write down that the x minus 1 squared is left over, but the x cancels out. If we look at fraction b, it's already got an x minus 1. Therefore, the x would be left, and one of the x minus 1's would be left.
If we look at fraction c, we can see that it's got x minus 1 squared. Therefore, if you multiply by x minus 1 squared, the x minus 1 squared would cancel out, but the x would be left alone. With that in mind, let's try to figure out what's left over. For the first fraction, the entire denominator cancels, leaving us with x plus 2. For fraction a, the x cancels, but the x minus 1 squared would be left over, giving us a times x minus 1 squared. For fraction b, one of the x minus 1's cancels, but that leaves us with an x and an x minus 1. So we'll have b times x times x minus 1. And then fraction c, you have x minus 1 squared on the bottom. That would cancel out, leaving just the x. Therefore, this is the equation that we're going to use for the rest of the problem to try to solve what a, b, and c are. However, there's one more piece of information that we need. We also need to find where the denominator that we had earlier is equal to zero. It's sort of like finding your asymptotes for a rational function. Our denominator was still x times x minus 1 squared, and we're going to find where that's zero. Just like before, we're going to split this up into two pieces. In the first piece, we'll say x equals zero. In the second piece, we'll say x minus 1 is equal to zero. Again, don't worry about the squared. Well, one of the pieces is already solved. x equals zero will be one of the answers. For the other piece, we'll add one to both sides. So we'll have x equals one. That's our other answer. So using this equation that we've written here and the two x values that we found, we can finally begin to solve what a, b, and c are. To begin solving, we're going to start by letting x equal 0. And let's put 0 into this equation and see what happens. Well, we'll have 0 plus 2 equals a times 0 minus 1 squared plus b times 0 times 0 minus 1 plus c times 0. You might see already that some of the terms will cancel out because c times 0 is simply 0 and b times 0 times 0 minus 1 because you are multiplying by 0 at some point also cancels out. This makes our equation much simpler. If we simplify on the left side we have 0 plus 2 which is 2 and then a times negative 1 squared. But negative 1 squared is simply 1. So on the right we have 1a. Therefore we can say that a is equal to 2. That's our first solution. That's one letter down, two to go. Now we'll try x equals 1. So let's put 1 in for every x. On the left, we will have 1 plus 2 equals a times 1 minus 1 squared plus b times 1 times 1 minus 1 plus c times 1. Let's see what cancels out. We know that 1 minus 1 is 0 and a times 0 will make the whole thing 0. So term a cancels out. For b, we have b times 1 times 1 minus 1, but again, 1 minus 1 is 0. So this entire piece cancels out, leaving us with a much simpler equation. On the left, we have 1 plus 2 is 3, and then on the right, we have 1 times c. Therefore, we can say that c is equal to 3. So now we know a and c. Only thing we're missing is b. 
Now we're out of x values to try. So let's try a different x value. You can pick any x value that you like at this point, but I'm going to try x equals 2. Seems like it's a fairly easy number to try to use. Let's plug it in everywhere that we see x. All right. We have on the left, x plus 2 is 2 plus 2 equals a times 2 minus 1 squared plus b times 2 times 2 minus 1 plus c times 2. However, we already know what a and c are, so let's put those in as well. We'll have 2 plus 2 equals a, which is 2, so 2 minus 1 squared, plus b times 2 times 2 minus 1, plus c, which we know is 3, so we'll have 3 times 2. Let's try to simplify our numbers. 2 plus 2 is 4, equals 2 times 2 minus 1 squared. 2 minus 1 is just 1. 1 squared is also 1, and 2 times 1 is 2. Plus b times 2 times 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is simply 1. 2 times the 1 is 2, times the b is 2b, plus 3 times 2 which is 6. If we simplify, we know that 2 plus 6 is 8. So we'll say 4 equals 8 plus 2b, and then subtract the 8 to the other side. 4 minus 8 is negative 4. The 8 minus 8 cancels out, equals 2b. If we divide both sides by 2, we'll end up with b equals negative 2. So that's all of our answers. We now know a and b and c. To complete the process, we'll say that our partial fraction is equal to a over the first term in the denominator, which was x, plus b over the second term, which was x plus 1, plus c over the third term, which was x plus 1 squared. Exactly what we wrote at the very beginning. Now, we replace a, b, and c with the numbers that we just found. So our answer will be 2 over x minus 2 over x plus 1 plus 3 over x plus 1 squared. This is our final partial fraction decomposition. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you again next episode.